Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to try out an idea I had, as I often do. We have here the Unix rocket, which is the first stage. I have used it from time to time. It has nine Raptor engines. I sometimes call it the Raptor 9 rocket. It's called Unix because in Jurassic Park they used the Unix system to contain the Raptors and we were, yeah, anyway. Uh, so it is a nominally reusable stage. It's got RCS thrusters up here. Probably should have grid fins. It's got fins down here. And actually these are the landing legs. They lower the flaps like that, that uh, double as air brakes and landing leg thingamajigs. So uh, that's how that's designed. And, but usually it goes with the Lex spacecraft. The Lex spacecraft is sort of a mini starship. It's only got one Raptor vacuum engine on a tail. And we've tried to use it from time to time. Otherwise, uh, it can also go with just uh, unreusable second stage. I have one of those for it. Uh, but I thought about trying to use something that I had made, which has not gotten much use before. It seemed pretty useless, but could be useful as a reusable second stage. And that is the small version of my Aerospike SSTO. Now you've seen the big version perhaps if you've seen my other videos. The big version has 36 M1 chambers at the bottom of it. Uh, so it's humongous. It has a tremendous carrying capacity to low Earth orbit. And this is much smaller. There's the mid version which, which has J2 engines instead. This has RL10 engines. So it's really tiny by comparison. It's only 262 tons, the fuel tank at least. The engine is also another 10-ish tons. Um, but 36 of the RL-10s, not very useful as an SSTO. Uh, it just doesn't have the kind of performance, even though I've assumed uh, lower nozzle ratio stats. So uh, the stats we have here is 35, uh, 355 sea level specific impulse and 444 vacuum specific impulse. The 36 uh, nozzles give us 3,960 kilonewtons in vacuum and yeah, 10.8 uh, tons. If it was just the uh, RL10 chambers, I think it ends up being five tons. And so the rest is all the heat shielding and the spikiness, aerospike. So that's what we have there. And we have the tank and we're trying to use it as a reusable second stage. So like I said, it's not very useful as uh, SSTO because the RL-10 wasn't really super made for that. Of course, uh, there have been attempts to use it for that, but uh, I think, well, this might be the best attempt. Well, not as an SSTO. I decided that we would not be trying to relight anything in order to land. Instead, we're going to use parachutes. Uh, considering this is just uh, 20, uh, sorry, 14 0.67 tons dry, and then this is another 10.8. Now, uh, ultimately, we're talking about 25-ish tons, and so that's not too bad for parachutes. Uh, so I decided to go with parachutes there, and then we have a payload. Right now, it's just a dummy payload, a huge tank of av gas, and I've got it at 50 tons. The question is whether we can carry the 50 tons. Actually, it's a little bit more because of the controllers. So let me just. Uh, resize this a little bit to get to exactly 50 tons or as close as I can but the question is whether we can get the 50 tons to orbit and then bring back the second stage and also reserve fuel in the first stage for uh, its return that's a little bit better so without further ado that will be our test and I think we'll be releasing the fairings, oops, releasing the fairings after the second stage starts. It's an awkward looking rocket, um, very awkward. I sort of like the fact that by themselves the Aerospike SSTOs aren't your traditional rocket shape, but now, now we're unsightly again. Anyway, so yes, we are going to try this out. Yep, there it is. We are uh, launching from Boca Chica. That's uh, just because that's where we were. I didn't move us back to Cape Canaveral. Otherwise, I would have gone with Cape Canaveral. I don't think SpaceX is going to build something like this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Very interesting. All right. So our plan for reserving fuel is that we'll reserve 10% of the first stage. So that means 17 seconds. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. Throttle is... Why are you... 
Can you just stay up, please? Okay, thank you. All right, ignition. Oh. And launch. I don't know why it sometimes wants to throttle down, though. Shouldn't be anything interfering with it. Well, I don't think you've seen a rocket quite like this before. But you gotta admit, it has some merits. I mean, having a capsule-shaped upper stage so that the upper stage can be brought back down. You sort of wonder why they haven't tried it. Except for the obvious aerodynamic issues in looks, but... You know... Those are often secondary. I'm using the lowest stats on the Raptor engines, by the way. They could easily get more than this. We're only at, uh, I think, 2,060 kilonewtons max on the Raptor sea levels, so... The total dry mass of the upper stage is a little bit more than 10%, including the engine mass. So that's not unreasonable either, I think. Of course, heat shielding is complicated. Okay, getting ready for the end of the stage. And that's 17 seconds, so staging. Ignition of the aerospike. I mean, sort of a half-assed aerospike. <laughs> I mean, whatever you might call it. And let's not talk about the plume. That's not the point. Okay, fairing set. Oh, we might be able to get more than this to lower forward. Well, then again, we have to deorbit this too, right? Uh, the There is RCS on here. That's what those little holes at the top bar, and they use the hydrogen and oxygen, so uh, their efficiency is 400 seconds, so we're assuming they actually burn the hydrogen and oxygen. Really, that assumption is based on the big SSTO, the Daenerys, where they're basically just hydrogen-oxygen engines. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, as an RCS thruster, maybe they just go with hydrogen gas thrusters or something like that. Okay, getting to orbit here. And shut down, 206 by 183 with 600 meters per second left, so maybe we could carry more than this, but let's just try it with the field we've got here. 50 tons is quite decent for this size rocket. It's about the same as Falcon Heavy. Uh, Falcon Heavy is heavier on the pad. So, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, of course, that's kerosene and oxygen and has, you know, um, suboptimal staging situation. But off goes the payload successfully. That's 50 tons. And now we have to deal with this fellow. All right. So, we are assuming that we close the engine at this point. Your RCS is working, and okay, well, unfortunately, it's gonna take a long time like this. But we definitely have the delta V. That's not a problem. Now, as far as splashdown is concerned, it's I mean the the shield here has to basically keep it watertight, which is a tough tough thing possible. Obviously, I mean watertight things happen. Okay, well that's good enough of a periapsis. We're going to be splashing down in the Pacific, unfortunately at night time. Uh, maybe, maybe Australia actually. We'll see. Okay, retrograde. We'll be trying to purge the oxygen only before splashdown. And that's just for safety's sake. Fine to purge the oxygen, it's the heavier bit anyway. But we'll keep it for now for the RCS thrusters. Okay, I've armed the parachutes, we are in the atmosphere, let's see what happens. I sort of feel like purging some of the oxygen right now might be helpful because we might be a little bit heavy for the surface area. 
But we'll see. Let's see how it goes like this. Okay, we're below 80 kilometers and finally getting getting into the thick of it. We are sort of glowing red here. Okay, 60 kilometers. We've got some overheating. That is the tank, by the way. Admittedly, the fact that it's shaped like this is a little bit awkward. I could probably come up with some better way of doing this. The reason why I had it like this is so that potentially the engine could be placed on a different type of tank instead of just this one. Uh, but having the air spike fitted inside the bottom of this and have it close up is an, also an option I'll think about. So basically have a completely smooth surface. I mean, I, I think uh, at that point we won't call it an air spike. We'll just have the engines there and have it close up. Animation-wise, it'd be easier than what I did here. Okay, so we're through that. Didn't seem too bad. I'm now going to purge the oxygen. Okay, so we're at 29 tons. Okay, getting ready for parachute deployment. Out they go. And mind you, it's actually tougher to do this with hydrogen and oxygen than other propellants because hydrogen is not very dense. So your second stage capsule would be much smaller and potentially look better on the top of a rocket if it was methane or kerosene or something like that. Uh, the downside, of course, is that you're probably not going to get the same kind of performance. You're going to end up with a heavier stage to get the same payload to where it needs to go. And that has ramifications all the way down. So, you know, that might result in a stubbier first stage that looks more suited to a capsule shape upper stage. Could work like that. Okay, we are 6.6 .6 meters per second. I'm sure Kerbal Buoyancy will make total sense <laughs> as we splash down. Yeah, let's not talk about it too much. Now, if you if you want to like bring it down on some clamps or something, have like retro thrusters or something like that, I don't know, whatever. Uh, there are options. We had enough Delta V left over to have some sort of propulsive landing situation, but Splashdown is simpler. Yeah, there's that. The world is mostly water after all. So there you have it. Fully reusable rocket capable of launching 50 tons. And it's just a different idea. And I sort of like it better because I have trouble landing those stages. <laughs> and the starship and all the other reusable things. Uh, even the... Uh, of course the smart reuse idea or some sort of heat shield and parachutes, you know, having an engine cluster ditches the tank. So there, there's downsides to everything. But, you know, it's an idea. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.